Well, hello there. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jana, and here I discuss all things books, literature, and makeup. Sometimes I review books while I'm applying my makeup, but today I wanted to introduce a new series of videos that I decided to call By the Way. At least it's a new one in English here for me. And in the By the Way series of videos, I intend to talk um, about all things that interest me, really, um, like writers, um, you know, genres, different clashes, friendships, relationships between writers, awards and rumors linked to those awards, maybe some mysteries, we'll see. Um, I hope that uh, it's going to be of interest for you too and you stick around, get another cup of coffee, tea, something stronger and yeah, just get on board. Today I wanted to talk about Federica Garcia Lorca, who is one of my favorite poets and playwrights of all time. Um, I'm no way expert on Federica Garcia Lorca's works, nor am I a historian to bring you a thorough research about, you know, historical events that accompanied Lorca's life and influenced his life uh, pretty much. So this video might be rather short, um, but I just wanted to, you know, maybe give a short introduction to his works and life to those who haven't heard of him and to just remind about this wonderful Spanish poet and playwright uh, to those who are already familiar with Lorcas. I have also a very short snippet of a personal story connected to Federica García Lorca. So I really discovered him in the library of a university I was studying in, St. Petersburg, many many moons ago and I just stumbled upon that book uh, started reading it and got absolutely fascinated and enchanted from the very first poem, I think. And for a very long time, I was trying to find a single person with whom I could talk about Federica Garcia Lorca, but no one seemed to know about him, you know, around me at least. And back then I was part of the Theatre of Poets in St. Petersburg and we were staging uh, in the theatre our own poems as well as uh, the poems of other authors known well known and not very well known so i chose to stage one of the seasons um the little wall vienna waltz uh by federica garcia lorca and everyone was just like who what uh also at the same time uh i remember when i was staging this poem, I went to a birthday party of my friend and she was not the only host of that party. They, you know, organized as a double birthday party and there was another girl who was a birthday host and I met another girl who was a friend of that other birthday girl. So we never met before. We met the party, we started talking and I mentioned uh, about me being part of the Theatre of Poets and uh, me staging Federica Garcia Lorca's poem and she was like, oh Lorca, I love him, uh, I studied theatre uh, in the Theatre Academy to become a theatre director, so as a graduation play they were staging the house of Bernarda Alba at the time and I'm like, that's insane, finally someone who knows about Lorca and someone who even works with his plays as a theatre director, that's like beyond luck, like what's happening? So throughout the years we became good friends with this girl and uh, she is a theatre director and actress. She actually stayed, uh, helped me to stage my own play later on in the Theatre of Poets, but that's another story entirely. Uh, I watched the graduation play The House of Marta Alba. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, I also watched other uh, stagings of the play in St. Petersburg in particular, two or three more. And I believe um, there is an uprising interest towards Lorca's plays. Uh, of course, one of his influences was Chekhov when he was writing his own, you know, plays. And it is uh, quite, you know, translatable to this very day. And I'm just happy to see the surgeon 
interest towards towards Lorca's poems and, and uh, plays overall. Yeah. Okay, so I will give a short uh, outlook uh, into the life of Felipe García Lorca as much as I can, and probably into his works as well, which is the most fascinating to me personally, and um, which had actually the most influence on my life, metaphorically speaking, and directly as well. Uh, but I don't know when I'm going to publish this video. I might coincide it with uh, Federica Garcia Lorca's birthdays, actually, which is on the 5th of June. We'll see. But anyway, it is uh, in 1898 that Federica Garcia Lorca was born uh, in the Andalusian region uh, to a quite well off wealthy farm owner and a school teacher. And uh, Lorca used to say that he inherited his father's val uh, system of value, of values, and um, his passion, especially towards uh, social activism. And he inherited an intelligence from his mother. His mother was exceptionally educated and educated women for that period of time. It was exceptional. Not many women had access to education and she was able to teach at school. Uh, his father was a rich land lord. Uh, however, it is said that he was also filling for the workers um, uh, on his land and he was never exploiting them and the conditions of work in his lands were rather favourable. And it is said uh, that Lorca actually inherited this um, attitude and this approach to the marginal marginalised groups of the society from his father. Uh, from the early ages uh, Lorca was acknowledging his privilege um, and he was also very much into arts as you know, his family had access to it, a large library, uh, possibility to see plays and to invite traveling actors, uh, to have actually servants at home who can help a little boy in performing and in staging some, you know, childhood plays, puppet shows and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, so this... Um, uh, so this is tendency to art followed Lorca was on his tail since early ages. At the age of 10, Lorca and his family moved to Granada, where he goes to a Catholic school, and later on he is admitted to the University of Granada to study law. He actually wanted to pursue a, a pianist uh, career, I guess. He was a very, you know, talented pianist, as it said, and he wanted to become a composer, but his father was not in favor of this. He wanted a more profound, you know, education and profession for his sons, so he insisted that Lorca um, enters the University of Granada to study law. It took him about nine years to do the bachelor's degree, after which he moves to Madrid to pursue more artistic um, pursuits or to follow more artistic pursuits. And in Madrid, in this private college, which he enters, he meets Salvador Dali and Luis Brunel, with whom they form kind of a friendship, uh, a circle of friends. And they do exchange different ideas. Um, of course, they have fun together. Uh, and they just, you know, live their young life, um, this talented bohemian young boys. Naturally, Salvador Dali and Federico García Lorca uh, grew much closer to one another. It was said also that um, Luis Bunel and um, Dali had also some kind of uh, relationship, so there was some form of jealousy maybe uh, in this triangle. Uh, but naturally, this companionship between Dali and Lorca uh, resulted in uh, some Dadaism and Surrealism forms of influence uh, to the arts of uh, one another. However, there was a big argument and other inhabitants of this residence were more like forward-looking avant-garde, uh, embracing Surrealism, Dadaism, as I said. And Lorca was still trying to keep the uh, folklore tradition in his in his uh, works, 
uh, he was very much influenced by the Andalusian folk, uh, also deep songs, the gypsy tradition, and he was trying to interweave all of this together in his poems and in his prose, which at times was quite, you know, um, badly taken by his friends and very much criticized by them, that he's not enough uh, forward-looking and he's not enough, like, avant-garde, let's say. Um, but still, Federico Garcia Lorca publishes his first uh, book of poems and later his stages in Madrid, his play. Uh, first time he stages this play, but I believe this is not his first ever written play. Uh, so it's called The Butterfly's Evil Spell and it is staged in Madrid in 1920 on the 22nd of March, which is also my birthday, but a coincidence, oh my god. Um, and this uh, play became a flop. It was um, just so badly taken by critics and by the audience and I believe there were also some whistles and some shouts during the performance, uh, first performance so it was like um, taken away from, from the program in a rush later, like his later works will be very much, you know, better um, accepted by the public for sure um, so pretty much like until 1930s, I think Lorca stays in Madrid and he's in all these bohemian circles with Dali and Bunel and others. And um, but in 1930, uh, he moved or like maybe 29. Don't take my word for granted. He moves to New York. He has a personal crisis back then. Uh, his mental health is not at the best. Uh, stayed uh, more so because he, I guess, um, fights for the ways to embrace and fights for the ways to proclaim as well in his art uh, his homosexuality and he feels, you know, suppressed because of this. And uh, in New York, uh, among those skyscrapers and the victory of uh, human thought and human action over nature, um, uh, you know, among those like concrete jungles, uh, Lorca feels ever more connected to nature and to the folklore roots and to, to the Andalusian tradition. And um, it's then, I guess, when it becomes even more pronounced in his art, in his works. Um, he returns to Spain and um, there is a governmental program at the time to sort of try to educate the masses and to bring art to even, you know, very remote regions of Spain. And Lorca is appointed as the head of the travel and theatre La Barraca. So they take place and stage them in the central squares of little cities, towns, villages, so on and so forth. And that's when they do stage the first play of the trilogy, of the tragic trilogy called The Blood Wedding, that has all those like deep song tradition, gypsy tradition, Andalusian folklore vibe. It's dramatic skeleton, I guess it's more uh, towards a Greek tradition. Uh, but it, it's filled with the Andalusian, Andalusian folklore, and you, you can you can sense the flavors. Uh, this is one of my favorite um, plays of all times. And then there is a second one in the trilogy called Yerma, and the third one that is written in 1936 called The House of Bernarda Alba. And what's notable that in all these uh, three plays, the central roles are taken by women. In some of the plays, for example, The House of Bernarda Alba, there are no male characters to appear on the stage at all. They're only talked about and they're mentioned, uh, but we don't really see them on the stage. And this attention towards the struggle of women and uh, sort of empathetic um, uh, you know, putting this empathetic spotlight on their struggles and on their lives is again the um, result of Lorca's dedication, I guess, to to the life of marginalized group. And as well, he might have felt uh, that empathetic because 
he himself was gay and he also had a struggle um, in, in the conservative society of the times. So in 1936, he writes The House of Bernard de Alba, and in June of that year, he reads it to his friends in Granada, and they are planning to stage it. But I guess it never sees the light of day um, in front of Lorca, because in August 18th or 19th, uh, the date is not officially verified, Lorca was executed by Franco's regime and his body was never found. Now, um, like it is of course said and believed that um, he was captured and he was executed because of his liberal views and homosexuality. And it was like uh, the, the, the days when the Spanish Civil War outbroke and so Federica Garcia Lorca was one of the first ones who was who were executed without trial during those days. Um, later on, some believe that uh, Franco's regime itself, uh, you know, relocated the body um, because of the outrage of the society, because of the um, maybe acknowledgement of the action. Um, other people believe that it was uh, Lorca's family who also relocated the body, that they were told about the location of it and that his body was taken to Madrid. But there are no official resources to prove that. Um, and, you know, officially his body was never found. And to be fair, Lorca proclaimed this in his early poems and he almost foresaw these events uh, in his you know, works. Uh, he said once, for example, that the river would take my body and no one would know where I am, something like that along the lines. Um, but yeah, the, this, you know, just horrendous act of humans, of the fascist regime at the time, resulted in us losing such a prominent, you know, uh, poet and playwright in his very early age, you know, uh, he was young, um, but this is, this is how the history goes. And as a closing thing, I thought that I would read uh, one of the Garcia Lorca's poems, the one I staged in the Theatre of Poets in St. Petersburg, um, and because it's one of my favorites and because there is something special about it, but I just will read it and let you decide if you like it or not. In Vienna there are ten little girls, a shoulder for death to cry on, and a forest of dry pigeons. There is a fragment of tomorrow in the museum of winter frost. There is a thousand windowed dance hall. Take this close mouthed waltz. Little waltz, little waltz, little waltz of itself, of death and of brandy that dips its tail in the sea. I love you. I love you, I love you. With the armchair and with the book of death down the melancholy hallway and in the Iris's dark carrot. In our bed that was once the moon's bed and in the dance that turtle dreamt of. Take this broken, wasted waltz. There are four mirrors in which your mouth and echoes play. There is a death of piano that paints little boys blue. There are beggars on the roof and there are fresh garlands of tears. Take this waltz that dies in my arms. Because I love you, I love you, my love. In the attic where children play, dreaming ancient lights of Hungary. Through the noise, the balmy afternoon, seeing sheep and irises of snow through the dark silence of your forehead. Take this, I will always love you, waltz. In Vienna, I will dance with you in a costume with a river head. See how the high sun line my banks. I will leave my mouth between your legs, my soul in photographs and leaves and in the dark wake of your footsteps. My love, my love, I will have to leave violin and grave, the waltz and rhythms. 
Well, thank you for watching this. Uh, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little story about Rodrigo Garcia Lorca. I hope it turned right. Uh, if you have heard of him, if you like his poems, plays, uh, whatever, share this in the comments. It would be in very interesting to to see more of Rodrigo Garcia Lorca fans. If you were not familiar with him before, I hope you now got this sparkle of interest with his works and will read something from his poems, from his uh, plays. Um, and yeah, just get yourself familiar with this amazing Spanish poet and playwright. And I do hope that you come back here and yeah i hope that you have a great week ahead and that yeah that you're doing just great you are actually for sure <laughs> see ya